Hello and welcome to homework five, part two. In this part of homework, we are given a problem in which we are looking at a turbine with some fluid flowing through it. And what we are asked to do is use momentum and kinetic energy balances to show that for maximum uh, power generation to uh, occur within this turbine, the ratio of uh, inlet to outlet velocities of the fluid flowing through the turbine needs to be equal to uh, one third. Now, what we're going to assume here is that um, we have perfect efficiency within our turbine here. So what I've gone ahead and drawn out here is just uh, we're going we're going to start with uh, some momentum balance here. But here on the left here, just to explain what I've drawn, this will be our turbine here with the actual blades in the middle. And what we have here, <clears throat> excuse me, is we have some air. We're going to be saying here that um, air is going to be our fluid here. So we'll have air going into our turbine from the left and it'll be going out uh, to the right. And what we notice here is that we have um, some mass flow rate going in, so density um, V1 and some area of this air going in. And then at the turbine here, we also have some mass flow rate density times S, we'll call that the uh, area of the actual turbine itself. And uh, obviously multiply that by V. And outside here, what you'll notice is that um, what should happen is that V2 will be flowing at a lesser rate because some of the kinetic energy is used up from the, the air that's flowing in in the actual turbine itself. So what happens here, because this velocity is um, smaller than the velocity going in, the air will start to stretch out more and it'll disperse and you're not going to if it was faster let's say it would be coming out really fast and you have a smaller area but since it's flowing out slower we have a much larger area here on the right so what we're going to start with here is a momentum balance so if we look at this system uh, we say that the uh, change in momentum of the system with respect to time well that's going to be equal to um, V1 times the mass flow rate, so everything going in. V1, or we could say V in, so we could do in minus out, but I'm just going to say with our system here being in minus out, or, or we could go uh, in minus out here. So we'll go V in times the mass flow rate going in, um, minus V out. Uh, times the mass flow rate going out and we'll add some force here and uh, now what we're going to say is that we want this to be at steady state we don't want there to be changes and fluctuations when we're looking at this situation so um, any derivatives here will be equal to zero so this will be equal to zero so if there's no changes with respect to time uh, the mass flow rate uh, going in will equal the mass flow rate going out, just simple in minus out. So m will equal m in, which will also equal m out. Okay. <coughs> now, um, what this is going to be equal to, this mass flow rate here, is the mass flow rate here of the actual turbine itself. So we'll set this equal to rho s v. And now what we can do is we can plug this in here and we're actually going to solve for this F here, our force. So if we bring over F to the other side, we'll have negative F. And now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in our V1 for V in and V2 for V out. So we'll have uh, V1 minus V2. Then multiplying here uh, by mass flow rate, rho as V, okay? So now what we're going to do is take a look at the power. And we know that power is equal to force times velocity. So P equals FV. And what we're going to say here, um, we're going to go ahead and plug in um, the expression that we have for our force. And I know, um, I know I erased it, but the expression we got was for negative F. However, since we want to look at a situation where the force is in the same direction of the velocity of our fluid flowing with our with our windmills turning, or our turbine, I should say, turning. Um, 
we're going to negate that negative sign. So if we plug in here for f with the expression that we had, we had v1 minus v2, and then we had rho sv, and we're just going to multiply here by v so we can square that. So rho sv squared. Okay, so let's bring that off to the side for now. And let's look at our um, kinetic energy balance. So this will be kinetic energy balance here. Now we can also think about this in terms of power here. So the, um, the net change in kinetic energy per unit mass multiplied by the mass flow rate will give us our power here. So delta Ke, again, change in kinetic energy per unit mass, so just per mass, times the mass flow rate will give us our power here. Now what we can do is we can substitute in here um, for our change in kinetic energy per unit mass. And we know that kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Well, if it's per unit mass, we can just negate or, or those two m's just cancel out. So what we will be left with here is um, we'll have v1 squared minus v2 squared dividing by two again because of the one half. And this mass flow right here will multiply by rho sv. Okay, so now what we can do here is we can set um, these two equations equal to each other. So if we do that here, uh, we'll have v1 minus v2 rho sv squared is equal to v1 minus v2 both of these are squared here for kinetic energy divided by 2 is equal to rho sv. Okay, so we can go ahead and cancel out some terms here. Um, we can cancel uh, rho s on those sides. And <coughs> what we can do here is if we solve for v, we will get that v is equal to uh, v1 minus v2, right? Then uh, this will be multiplied uh, on top by v1 plus v2. On the denominator here, we'll have uh, 2 multiplied by v1 minus v2. So what we see here is that these cancel, and we actually get um, a term here for our velocity v, which was kind of vague um, when we introduced this problem, this, this rho s v in the middle with some, some cross-sectional area s and some velocity here v. Well, we now have an expression for it, which is v1 plus v2 over two. So now what we can do is we can plug this back into our power expression, or one of the power expressions that we use, whether it's in uh, momentum energy balance or kinetic energy balance. Uh, but if we plug in here, uh, power is equal to v1 squared minus v2 squared. Um, we'll just multiply or divide it here by four because we'll be multiplying by this here. We have rho s right and then we multiply by v1 plus v2 okay so now what we can do is uh, we can sort of rearrange this a little bit so we can uh, pull the row and s out front and multiply all these ugly v1 and v2s out so row s uh, over four and then if we multiply these out what we'll be left with here is v1 cubed then we will be adding uh, v1 squared times v2. Subtract um, v1 times v2 squared. And um, we will subtract v2 cubed, right? Okay, so now what we can do here is we're gonna go ahead and factor out this v1 cubed. So rho s over four, um, we'll have v1 cubed out here. So we'll have one, we still, we have v1 squared in here, so we'll divide by um, v1, so v2 over v1, minus um, v2 over v1 squared, and then minus uh, v2 over v1 cubed. 
Now, the reason that this is nice um, and the reason we factored out V1 here is to get our ratio here of outlet uh, velocity to inlet velocity. And if you remember, what we are looking to solve for here is for maximum power, we want to show that the, the ratio, this ratio here is indeed equal to uh, one third. So what we can do here is realistically, um, just to solve this, we can set this equal just to some constant here. But um, what we can do is we can set some ratio here, or we can set the, the gears, if we have this type of system set up in our turbine, to um, connect with this and give us um, give us a ratio here in the turbine of uh, V2 to V1. So let's say we just call it R. So this would be gearing ratio here. Okay. So if we call these just some constant here R, we'll get P is equal to rho S V1 cubed over four times one plus R minus R squared minus R cubed. Now what we can do here is we can um, take the derivative here of this expression. So take the derivative of the power with respect to R, okay? And, and we're gonna go ahead and set this equal to zero, which will allow us to solve for R here. And this will give us the ratio of outlet um, velocity to inlet velocity. But let me erase here and give us some room. So taking the derivative of the power with respect to R, what we'll end up, we'll have our constants out here, rho s uh, v1 cubed over four. And um, on the inside, we'll have one minus two r, right? And then minus three r squared. Again, setting this equal to zero, we can solve for this r here, and we can get at the ratio of the outlet velocity to the inlet velocity. So when we do this, obviously this will, um, become zero and what we will be left with is one minus three r right multiplied by one plus r okay and what we see here is that r is indeed equal to one third so we uh successfully solved this we have now shown that the ratio of outlet to inlet velocity is equal to one third um if we are achieving, or, or to achieve, I guess we should say, because normally that's how we would be looking at it, to achieve uh, maximum power in our turbine here. Now, what we can do is we can um, plug this back in to solve for the amount of power that we are actually getting, um, but that's just a simple um, plugging back in, but um, we have solved what we need to solve here, and that will conclude this video. Thank you for watching.